everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having a great start to your weekend. As you can see, it's another rainy weekend uh, in the H, but I'm all good. Uh, it's cool. Feeling that uh, rain is just a part of it. Hey, um, it's the weekend, so we're doing another weekend fundraising boost. Uh, our goal last weekend was to do $5,000. Uh, if you believe in the work that we do, and I say this all the time, this is for people who don't believe. This is for people who aren't aware. If you aren't aware, uh, the link uh, to the organization's uh, official site is in the description box, the post box, wherever you're watching this at, and you can see in full detail everything that we have done, that we do, uh, and that we are doing. Uh, also, you can, if you are in need of something that we offer, uh, that's a way to find out about how to access uh, our services uh, that we provide. But for those of you who have followed, those who believe, those who chime in, those who are constantly showing by way of participation that you do believe uh, we need your support. Like I said last week, the goal was um, $5,000. We raised $70. Um, and that's actually better than typical. Um, and it is what it is. And yet, we keep going. Uh, and we keep doing. And I tell everybody, I've funded 90 plus percent of everything that we've done for over 20 years. Uh, you know, but my family pays a price when I do that. And I am calling on the people who believe in collective uh, existence, the black collective existence. See, a lot of us have bought into individualism. A lot of us have bought into the American dream, the idea of the American dream. Get out there and get yours. Everybody now is concerned with themselves. Everybody sees their black brothers and sisters as competition, uh, as false representation, and so much, uh, so many other things that we don't see the connectivity, the need for connectivity. We don't see the need for community. We don't see the need for unity when our unity is what they fear the most because they understand the power and the force that comes with that. I've been talking, preaching, speaking, writing, doing so much on that for years. Uh, it, it, knowledge is in power. First of all, let me tell you something. Knowledge is in power. There's a constant push on knowledge is power. No, knowledge has potential for power. Knowledge does not become power until it is properly applied, until you're actually practicing the principles based off of the knowledge. That's why when I, when I did the research on African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, I didn't just publish the results. I used what I learned to create programs that help socialize young black boys because that was one of the most prominent ways of impacting their proclivity towards violence. Uh, same thing with domestic abuse. Same thing with childhood abuse uh, and uh, adverse childhood experiences. As you learn how these things are packaged, you come up with programs, you come up with uh, intervention measures to ensure that you can mitigate that. The thing is, it takes resources to reach the masses. It works. I've proven it works for years, but it you know, I can only reach the people I can reach. And it, trust me, it works. This isn't something new. There's a reason why every other major group has a rite of passage for their young black, I mean, from their young males. Why? Because that's one of the most powerful ways to socialize. It prepares them to be pro-social within their enclave. And I can go on and on, but what I can tell you is they have support. They function as a unit. They operate as an enclave. Look at how, just look at the response to Kyrie and uh, Kanye. And it'll show you the, 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 the depth and unity and fluidity in which a group moves 
when they feel opposition. Whereas in we're all over the place, we have no agenda, we have no blueprint. We have it. You go to the site, the blueprint is there. I consulted some of the greatest minds of our time and researched some of the greater minds of the past to come up with that blueprint. Uh, I pass it in front of the, the great, as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Claude Anderson. I didn't say the perfect Dr. Claude Anderson. I didn't. I said the great Dr. Claude Anderson, a man that gave so much of his life trying to share and teach and bring awareness. Uh, and although we disagreed on a couple of things, uh, he and his wife Joanne co-signed that blueprint. Uh, and so, and this was damn near 10 years ago. What, I'm, what am I getting at? I'm getting at this. You have for years had unbelievable and brilliant minds working on your behalf. You made it up. Cheered them on. But then support them in a way that they could actually activate the knowledge so that it could be applied. It was just knowledge. And we are unbelievably astute at debating. Uh, we get in debates and everybody wants to flex their intellectual muscle, uh, their knowledge of history and their understanding of specific dynamics in the play of white supremacy racism and the white racial caste system and everybody sounds smart. It's all great. Ain't shit been done. You know, I've, I've done what I need to do as far as establishing myself as a mind in this. I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm trying to show and teach people what it takes. But me saying it and you sitting up saying, I believe it, it's awesome, that's cool, man, thank you, it's all good. I appreciate any 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 support and accolades and all of that that I get. I am. I'm a very appreciative person. Nobody, no, nobody even owes me a thank you or a click the like button. Nobody owes me anything. But this isn't about me because I can go out with my business, which is how I support things at the Odyssey Project. And I can take care of my family. I don't need to do this as a mean. I, I'm not getting rich off of my people. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going the other direction. I'm going towards broke, not really, but definitely significantly impacted by the way that I pour myself into this. And it's a legacy. It's it's not. It's an investment. Here's why. The work I do is imprinted. It's in books. I've written two published 25 full-length books, probably another 30 or 40 uh, short-length, or, uh, you know, what I call half books, under 200 pages, and then thousands of articles. I've done lectures. I've got thousands upon thousands of videos. I'm leaving an imprint of what I stood for. And at some point, the things I'm talking about now, people are gonna realize just how prevalent they are. And my legacy will speak for itself. It will speak of me and on my behalf. And so I don't, I'm not here for any of that. I'm here because there's work to be done. We just lost another beautiful young black woman here in Houston because her ex couldn't handle rejection. We, we're going to have to deal with that. And that goes in the socialization area. We aren't creating stable, emotionally stable men on a grand scale. We have some unbelievable men out there. The men I socialize with, the men I operate with, the men I run with. Solid. But it's far too many that aren't. And those are the ones that we missed because we weren't committed to doing what was necessary. That's on us. But with that being said, I'm about to get out of here. I'm at the gym. Everybody parking close because it's raining, so they don't make me actually have to walk. I almost say it's. Yeah. <laughs>
But anyway, it is what it is. It's just water. But uh, again, if you believe in what we do, it's that time. Uh, click the link in the description box, or if you prefer to give by way of Cash App, make it happen. That information is also in the description box. And anything that you give is appreciated. Sometimes to me, it's uh, all the time to me, it's not the amount. Now, the size of the uh, donation actually determines how much can be done. But just the time that it takes a person to stop and do it. A dollar says, I see you. I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. And that vote of confidence, you know, is a lot. Not just for me. You got to understand, I've convinced a lot of people to come in and do this work. And they get a vote of confidence when they see that the community is behind them. They are the one that stays on me about the whole fundraiser thing because I'm the kind of person I'm going to ask once and I'm like, man, anybody get And, and I, I'll figure out how to get it done. And they see the strain that that puts on me and my family. And they also see that as the community not being behind real, true grassroots efforts. We get behind big names. We got took for a hundred million minimum from Black Lives Matter before we figured that one out. Even though Darren Seals, Leo Deur, or myself were screaming from the rooftops what was going on. Uh, they got us good. Still living high off the hog from that. And ain't Jack been done in the hood. Look at Ferguson now. Look at St. Louis now. Look at what could have been if we would have held tight, stayed unified, and worked with the people who were already on the ground, the natives that were there that knew what was going on. What would have happened? What could have that been? Could that have been the mecca and the model? We won't know now because white money paid black faces to go in and disrupt it. And we won't get behind the people who have shown us for years that they're for us and that they can make some things happen. That's an issue. But again, I am a person that was reared by my great grandfather. He told me nobody owes you nothing. Go out and get it. So I've been going out and get it, going out and getting it. And I will continue to do so. But I'm telling you, we have the ability to literally change things and it's going to start with how we develop and build and protect our children. We're not doing a great job of that right now. And the ability to do so, the awareness and knowledge to do so is there. The resources are not. On that note, I'm out of here.